yes good evening everyone who are listening today my name is john wack i'm a pastor with the hope of israel worldwide church of god i'm serving kenya and other parts of east african or african parts of the country as we are here today to learn and to know the truth about some other dimensions that most people are uh, a seriously misunderstanding in the Bible. Today I would like to start with the word conversion. How do you understand conversion? How should a Christian understand what the conversion is? Because many people have been mistake, misinterpreting it. Uh, some think that uh, when they become members of a church or a religion group that they are now converted. But think that when they change from one denomination to the other one, that they think that they have converted. So what is conversion? No, not, not all conversions are God-inspired, and not all leads people to God. Rather, it leads them away from God. But God very much was want us to learn but to pr and to practice his ways of life, to become sincerely and th thoroughly committed to it. He promises his help if we willingly follow his instruction. He wants to see us a new person and a new converted member of his family. So back to the question, what is conversion? Conversion is a change. It's a change from inward, from is a change from our human nature to godly nature. It's a change whereby we live our past life and we follow what God wants us to do. We follow the instruction and the commandments of God. That's the real conversion. Somebody who has been converted will stick to the truth and will follow it with, with his own art. Is conversion, you cannot make someone to be converted, but it's a decision, it's a personal decision. So today you want to see from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24, and uh, here this is what we read, Ephesians chapter 4 and uh, verse 24, Bible says, Mm, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So somebody who is a really converted must put on a new man. And this new man, we put it on after the baptism. Because the baptism symbolizes the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We die to sin and we rise to righteousness from the watery grave outside we, we we become new person or new man he wants to change us god wants to change us from the 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 the, the, the art our call brethren is to be converted to have a new life in christ in jesus christ uh, when christ says that he did not come for good people, but sinners. So Christ came because of you and me. When you are still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us see that in the book of Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And in verse. Mark chapter 2. And in verse uh, 17. Mark chapter 2 verse 17. Here is what the Bible says. Uh, this is the word of Jesus Christ himself. When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of physician. But those who are sick, I did not com come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So if you know somebody is a sinner or he knows himself that he's a sinner, that is the person who Christ came for. He came for the sinners to be converted back to newness and to have a new image of God. So 
uh, it's be, uh, we, we need to show changes from all things that we have been doing that do not please God, but to do what pleases Him. We need to change from our human nature to have God's nature. Brother and God wants us to change from our basic attitudes and responses to life. Uh, it's, it's, it's an everyday situation. God wants us to be partakers of the divine nature. That's the reason why he sent his son to die for us. In the book of Second Peter, in the book of Second Peter, we'll read what the Bible says and see what God wants from us. It's not what we want from God, but God wanted us to be like Him. In the book of First Peter, Second uh, Peter, chapter one, and uh, in verse. Second uh, Peter chapter one, one verse three to four says, "At His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given uh, to us exceedingly great and precious pr promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature." having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. So God wants us to change, to escape from the, the nature of human being, which has uh, uh, partakes many people, to be, for us to be partakers of the divine nature uh, and we have uh, to have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. So a converted person also should know how to control himself. He should know how to think twice before he act. That will show that you have what is guiding you not to do things the way the worldly people are doing. A converted person will have the Holy Spirit which will lead him or her towards the righteousness. So you, can't not, you cannot do it alone. You must have the helper which is the Holy Spirit to guide us, to keep us, and to lead us to doing things the right way. So if you have been converted uh, truly, then God will use you. God will show you the ways you should walk. Brother, conversion is to turn. We turn from our nature to God's nature. So we should know what we are turning from while we are turning to God. You should recognize the sins which was possessing you, which you are doing unknowingly or knowingly, so that they are the things which you can turn out of. You know there's no way you can be converted without recognizing the sin. We should not pretend that we, we know we are sinners. The sin, you should mention the sin with this name. That's the, if I'm a adulterer, if I'm a fornicator, if I'm a thief, if I'm stealing, if I'm a covetousness, if, if whatever kind of sin I'm doing, I should recognize that sin first. Then I hate it. Then, then I, I will try to come out of it. That's what we call conversion. So, uh, Prophet Isaiah gave us clear answer. What make us to be far from God? And this is what we should put as uh, he and, uh, and, and, and for shakes, shake the face of our God. In Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59, in the book of Isaiah 59 and in verse uh, Isaiah chapter 59, Isaiah 59. And then uh, in, in verse, uh, verse 1 to 2, here Isaiah uh, point blankly telling us that uh, what makes us not to come near God or what hinders our prayers not to be heard by God. It's uh, the thing which we need and uh, we need to come out of it. This is the Bible, what the Bible says. Behold, the Lord's hand is not 
shortened that it cannot save nor is here heavy that it cannot hear but your iniquities have separated you from your god and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you you see that uh, our sins separating us with our god so if you want to be a converted person you need to change from that and we need to have an attitude and the righteous way to follow God so that we can know what we need to do or what we need not to do. So uh, in, also in the book of John, John also is uh, telling us that if we want to pretend that we are not sinners, you know, somebody may think that after the conversion, after baptism, he may think that he's, uh, now as a clean man, is pure, is holy. But that's not what the Bible says, because if you close your eyes for your sins, then you'll see other people's sin. That will not help you. We need to open our eyes and see the sins that we are committing. Then that is when we will see the sins others are committing. Most people are good at seeing other people's sin rather than seeing themselves. If you see my sin and not see yours, that I'll say thank you because... You show me what I am and what I need to change. But if I see my sins before I see yours, that's when I need to change so that I can correct you to change also in, on the way. For, so all of us, we should come to the knowledge and the truth of God. Mm. So let, let us read what the, 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 the Apostle John says in the first John. Uh, the first John chapter 1 and verse 8. First John chapter 1 verse 8 First John chapter 1 verse 8 says that if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness verse 10 if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and this word is not in us. So if you think that when after conversion, you will not become a holy person, you will not sin, no. A conversion is a process. If you may find yourself committing another sin, which you realize that is a sin, then what needs to be done? You repent and you be converted again. You keep on moving. You keep on requesting God for forgiveness through the prayer, with the heartfelt, then God will forgive you and he will open that your mind and then you'll see that sin and you'll not repeat it again. So, brethren, we, we need not to pretend like most of the other people so-called themselves Christians. They call themselves with big names, pastors, bishops, reverends, whatever name they call themselves. They are being blinded because they didn't have true conversion that can lead them to the salvation which we are waiting so we have to think and see that what should i individually do so that i may into, into enter into that kingdom that's why christ says that without conversion we can't enter the kingdom of god in the book of matthew chapter 8 verse Verse, verse 13 so we should we should be converted we should follow we should try to walk in a newness way in a new way of life that is what god wants from us brethren we should not pretend that we don't know what we are doing but most people most churches do not teach this properly but we need to start from us we pastors the other people in the church in our congregation we should know what the conversion is and what need to be done before you become converted you should know recognize your sins what am i going to convert out of what i need to be converted into so we need to be converted converted out of our sinful nature towards uh, god's nature so in ezekiel 18 also ezekiel 18 verse 28 here prophet ezekiel was telling us something so important that we need to also to cover Ezekiel 19, 18, and verse 21. Ezekiel 18, and verse 21. And uh, this is what the Bible says in Ezekiel 18, verse 21. He says that, uh, mm, But if I, a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed, 
keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the tr uh, transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him because of the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. So you see that no matter what kind of sin you commit at past, God wants to see you after the conversion. He forgets those sins and you forget those sins, then you focus ahead. But most people are very good on reminding people what they did some 20 years ago, 10 years ago, and many years ago. They will not accept if even if you have converted. That will not worry you because it's between you and God. What matters is that are you really repeating those things or you have converted and doing the new things again now which God wants to count you for. That's what the prophet Ezekiel is trying to tell us there that if a sinner be converted and start doing good things then God will forget the wrong things, the bad things he used to do for the past. So brethren we need to change we need to have that change from us we need to follow the right thing the right way you should walk in and uh, be converted to the new things mm. Mm. that is the conversion which god wants us to have that's when god will forgive us our sins and uh, we will receive the holy spirit and we must stop transgressing god's law prophet azakiel is giving us a, a way that shows that our God is a merciful God. He forgives us uh, all the sins and uh, wipe away all our sins uh, which we have done in our lives. Ezekiel 33 and uh, verse 14 to 16 also. Here is what we read. Ezekiel 33 and uh, verse Ezekiel 33, brethren, verse 14 to 16. He has also prophet Ezekiel is uh, giving us a little bit of instruction how we should do things. Ezekiel 33 and in verse 14 to 16. This is what the Bible says. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. If he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right, if the wicked restores the pledge, give back what he has stolen, and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins which he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right. He shall surely live. So, brethren, it's for us to forget the past life we used to live. It's for us to forget the things we did before we come to the conversion. We need to think of what now after the conversion, how should I conduct myself before the people and before God? How should I walk in newness? How should I see my life changing each and every day how will the holy spirit assist me to see my faults which i may encounter on this journey so that i may change from them and follow the right way which god wants me to do that's the real life a, re a christian lives today we don't say that a christian cannot sin but if we sin then we have intercessor the one who is requesting god to forgive us who is jesus christ now because we are the children of god and with his friends he will intercede for us that's why he said his blood so that me and you whoever will come to him will not perish but have everlasting life the everlasting life will have it at the end when god and christ will say come you blessed of my father inherit the kingdom give, prepared from for you from the beginning of the world and uh, that's our focus that's where we are looking for that's what we are after for in the church that's what we should strive to live a godly life in this crooked world brethren we should uh, think of this in, in our daily life sinning comes from the within us the one that lives in us that nature the sin begins in our mind. It started with harmful thoughts, 
desires and attitudes but paul tells us in romans 1 verse 28 romans chapter 1 and in verse 28 and we'll see what the apostle paul was trying to illustrate for the people who are at rome he wrote them a letter and that letter also applies to us today because uh, uh, there th there's something people used to say that the history repeat repeats itself. The reason why the history repeats itself is because the, the na human nature also never changes. It repeats itself. So those who are at the Rome by that time, with those who are here today, we are the same. So all the scriptures apply to us too. In the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 28, to 32 this is what the bible say and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a, uh, a debased mind to do and uh, to do this, those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, investors of evil things, disobedient to parents, and deceiving untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So if somebody is trying to approve or to, uh, to help you sinning so that the, 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 you will not inherit their kingdom, we deserve the punishment and judgment of God. So be it a pastor or a rabbi or a bishop, you should teach people to go to the righteousness, to have the very rightful conversion so that they can follow what God wants them to do. So he, he lists most of the things we are doing that makes us sinners. These are what uh, we should remove out of our minds and become like God. Uh, a converted person now should prioritize to seek God, God's kingdom. After we have repented and are baptized, God wants us to seek the spiritual elements, those things that we have been promised, more so the kingdom of God, as we can read in Matthew 6 verse 33. Matthew 6 Verse 33 says that uh, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all shall be added to us. So brethren, the, uh, the Bible is very clear on this topic, on this uh, issue of conversion. It's not changing from denomination or from another church to join another church. Many people do ask, so what if, if I come from this church and join the, the other church? Will I be required to be baptized again? But that we have some other points where we need to ponder, maybe sometimes in the, the future towards this our message, that uh, it depends with the message you had, it depends with the right conversion, it depends with the, the way you are now, to the point where you are now. So it's, it's a decision you can make by yourself whether you want to be baptized or not. But the proper baptism are happen after the prof proper conversion towards God's nature. Brethren, for the conclusion, let us hope and find out 